Hello, and welcome to Creative Measures Finale Training. My name is Scott Quackenbush, and I'm the owner of Creative Measures, and I'm here to help you demystify Finale. Finale has this reputation for having a very steep learning curve, and it's very intimidating for beginners. I'm here to help you out. This series of videos is designed to help you get your score set up and get you notating as quickly as possible. Today, we're going to walk through two methods of setting up your score. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel so you'll never miss any future tutorial videos. Now, let's jump right in. Before we start, I need to mention that I'm using Finale 26 for Windows. Uh, if you're using an earlier version, some of the things may operate a bit differently. If you're using a Mac, some of these things may look a little bit different, but they function generally the same way. The first method we're going to use is Finale's Setup Wizard. This is actually one of Finale's more intuitive processes. So all we're going to do at your launch screen is to cursor over to the Setup Wizard and click on the button. Now the first thing you need to do is take a glance at the settings for the page size and the page orientation for the score and the parts. Finale defaults to letter size or 8.5 by 11 in portrait orientation, primarily because this is what most people have access to for their home printers. However, it is important to know that Finale has a lot of different page sizes that you can work with. Once you settle on a page size, you need to select what ensemble you're writing for. You can either use one of the predefined ensembles here in the left column, or you can create a completely new ensemble from scratch. For this tutorial, we're going to select String Quartet. Once you've decided on your ensemble, you can move over here to the right and select a document style. The predefined document styles have default fonts, text inserts, certain page layout elements, and so on already selected. You can see over here on the right which elements belong to specific document styles. As you become more proficient, you may find that one of these styles suits your needs better than the others. However, it's very important to note that once you leave the setup wizard, you can change any element that you want to manually. So don't be too concerned about making a mistake at this point. I recommend using the engraved style at first, and you may never feel the need to deviate from this style. Now we're going to click Next. This window allows you to make alterations to your ensemble instrumentation. Since we already picked string quartet, you'll notice that the instruments are already populated in their proper score order. However, if you wanted to add, say, a solo trumpet to this ensemble, you would come over here to the left column and simply click Brass. You'll then see a complete list of brass instruments appear in the middle column. Now, let's add a C trumpet by clicking on it and hitting the Add button. You could also add it by double-clicking the instrument name. In the far right column, you'll notice that the C trumpet was added to the top of the score. If you want to change the order of any of these instruments, simply highlight the instrument you would like to change and click these up or down arrows over here. If you would like to add some extra space between stabs, select the instrument that you would like to appear after the extra space and click Add Vertical Space. This can be handy with vocal lines or with instruments that you know will be playing in the extreme high or low registers and will be using a lot of ledger lines. Now at this point, if you've created a completely customized ensemble, you can save it with all of its settings and next time it'll appear in the ensemble list when you launch the startup wizard. Now click Next. This is where we add all of our text information, our title, our composer, our lyricist, our copyright information, and so on. Add whatever you'd like, leave anything you want blank. Anything that's left blank will have a text placeholder in the score and you can delete it manually. We're going to click Next again. This screen is where you're going to select your time signature, your key signature, the number of measures that are in your score, if you know it, and your initial tempo marking, and whether or not there's going to be a pickup measure to the piece. And now we just click Finish. And there you have it, a string quartet with a solo trumpet part. You'll notice that the vertical space we added appears between the trumpet and violin one. 
To eliminate any unused text placeholders, go to your selection tool, and then click on anything you don't want, and simply hit delete on your keyboard. The second method that I'm going to show you is particularly handy if you're just trying to create a single staff score. For example, if you're an oboe teacher who simply wants to create a single line exercise for your students, this may serve you better than the setup wizard, although you could certainly use the setup wizard if you wish. From the launch window, we're going to click default document. This creates a single 31 bar staff in treble clef in 4-4 time. From here, you can alter the individual elements to meet your needs. So let's change the clef, the time signature, and the key signature. Let's select the clef tool. And then we're going to double click on bar one. And we're going to select a bass clef. We're going to leave all of these options as their defaults for right now. And we're going to click OK. Now let's do the time signature. There are a couple of ways to do this. First, click on your time signature tool, and now we're going to go and right click on bar one. This brings up a context menu that has a lot of your standard time signatures. This is the quickest way, but if you'd like to use a time signature that isn't included or simply want more control over your time signature, simply left double click the bar and the time signature box will pop up. From here, you can customize your time signature. You can change the number of beats in a bar. You can change the beat duration. You can even tell Finale to display a different time signature than one that would traditionally be displayed. But we're going to cover that in another tutorial. For now, let's set our score to 5-4 time. Finally, we'll change the key to F major. Select the key signature tool. Similar to the time signature tool, you can either change the key by right-clicking the bar and selecting from the context menu, or you can double left-click the bar to bring up the key signature dialog box. We're going to select a major key, and we're going to add one flat by clicking the down arrow because we want F major. If you clicked up, it would take the flat away and start adding sharps, but what we want is F major. And we're going to leave all of these settings at their defaults for right now. And then we're going to click OK. Now we're going to deal with these text placeholders. Just like we did in the setup wizard, we're going to eliminate the composer and copyright blocks by using the select tool. Simply select the ones that you don't want and hit delete. To change the remaining blocks, click on the placeholder. Delete the text and type what you would like. If you need to add measures to your score, you can either double click the measure tool to add single measures at a time, or right click the measure tool to bring up a context menu that will allow you to customize how many measures you would like to add. If you need to delete some bars from your score, click the selection tool and select all of the bars that you wish to delete. You can select multiples by pressing shift on your keyboard. And then hit delete. Okay, and that's it. In future videos, we're gonna be covering simple entry, entry of articulations, expressions, smart shapes, lyrics, chords, anything you need to get you rolling in finale. If this was helpful, go ahead and hit that like button, and please subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any future tutorial videos. If you have a specific topic you'd like me to cover, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Have a good one.